want to thank God for allowing us to come this afternoon again for this meeting. And I would like us to have a little sharing. Then I will ask you questions and you will ask me questions. And after we answer each other, we will pray and call it a day. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, once again, may your will be done this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the question I want us to consider this afternoon is, why was the given rejected? 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 And I've observed human behavior, and I think my psychology teachers will one day tell me, people come to church, they are told our speaker today is so-and-so, and they're just listening. Then the moment you mention the topic, they now open the bag to get the notebook, pen, and what have you. Why didn't they open when you were introducing me? You told them I'm going to speak, but their bags were just closed. He is here, their bags were just closed. He is going to speak to us. Their pens and papers were still safe. I even stood and greeted them 20 times. The bags were still Then I said our topic today, and now they start searching. Where is my pen? Why is it like that? And you know, I'm saying that hoping they are searching, but they have stopped. Then now when I begin again, they now continue the search. <laughs> human behavior but my psychology teachers are very faithful i know after this they are going to advise me and tell me this is why they do that why was the given done what why was the given done what why was the given done what if you feel sleepy you respond why was the given done what rejected very good we want to know why the given was rejected that's what we want to do. We want to know so that our giving is not done what? Rejected. Can you imagine if you give and it is rejected? Why was the given rejected? One day when I was still learning things of life, there was some girl who I loved so much, but for some reason I had not told her and such reasons are only understood by men. Are we together? You love her and you look at her and she realizes after a while that you are always looking at her. Are we together? And in the process, even in, at some moment, she smiles. And you think the smiling is consent. And so you believe that the love is mutual even though it has not been discussed. If brothers, you understand me, say amen. Uh, brethren, if you understand me, say amen. Uh, solidarity of the boy child. If you understand me, say amen. amen. And so I bought a small gift and I sent it to her by an emissary. But the one I sent came back with the gift and said, I'm a Qatar. <laughs> it still hurts me up to today. Are we together? <laughs> I have not recovered. Are we together? And that was when I was in standard four. But I have not done what? I have not recovered. And that's why I'm asking this question. Why was the given done what? Why was the gift rejected? The gift was sent, but it came back rejected. Rejected. It has not been accepted. And those days again, we will go to the road and collect milk cans. Milk cans will be taken to KCC, and then they will come back. But when you go there, you take the milk with a wheelbarrow, and you go without a wheelbarrow because the can is lighter. So another day you go there, and the milk is still in the can. But it has a small note from Kenya Cooperative Creameries. Low butter fat rejected milk. You know, they give you a message. They say that this milk has been rejected be because the butter fat is what? Is low. 
So we always want to know, why is something rejected? Why was the given rejected? Why, friends? Because rejection of the gift is also rejection of the giver. Why was the given rejected? We want to know because rejection of the gift is also rejection of what? Of the giver. You know, it has been said that there is no free lunch. And so if somebody buys you, my sister's, free lunch, it is not free. And if you are not interested in the agenda around lunchtime or after lunch, it is best for you to reject that lunch. I mean, people are not just generous to come from nowhere and wish you a lunch. How? And it is completely naive on your side to believe that somebody is so kind-hearted to buy you lunch because at some point the lunch will be paid for. And so, if you are not interested in the person and their gender, do you accept the lunch or you reject it? Even when you are hungry. Do you accept the lunch or you reject it? There is a brother who is laughing knowing you won't reject it. <laughs> the way the brother is laughing is like he knows you guys. There is no way you are going to reject the lunch. I'm saying, do you accept it or reject it? You must reject the lunch. Particularly if you don't know the agenda. Somebody just comes and says, I want to buy you lunch. From where? Since when? Why was the given done what? Rejected. Because rejection of the gift is also rejection of the giver, we need to ensure that our giving is not rejected because when our giving is rejected, we have been done what? We have been rejected. The Bible teaches that giving is not complete unless all aspects, including giving, take, takes place. You cannot say that you have finished worshipping if you have not done all aspects of worship. I want to ask you questions, my friends. If you came to church on a Sabbath day and there was no preaching whatsoever, will worship be complete? No, I'm asking you, will worship be complete? No, because part of worship is proclamation of the word of God. Even when youth go out in March and they say we are going to help the poor on Sabbath morning, what do they write on the t-shirts behind their backs? Be the what? Be the sermon. Why? Because a worship service cannot come to an end unless there is a sermon. That is one aspect of worship. Second aspect, what if you came to church and there was no praying at all? No praying. Will, will worship have taken place? No, can you imagine? No praying. We just bring somebody and he preaches a powerful sermon and he sits down and you are told, now you can go home, please. You can now go home. Okay, I'm asking, will worship have taken place? No. I can't hear you. Will worship have taken place? No. no, because without prayer, without proclamation of the word, worship will not have done what? Taken place. And we are saying that in the, all those aspects of worship, one of them is giving. If worship comes to an end and you have not given, did worship take place? <laughs> Why are you reluctant to respond? I'm asking, I'm asking friends, if you don't give at all, will worship have taken place? No. Giving is part of worship. And so let me go back again because friends, it seems I have to slow down here. I've discovered either my speed is too high or your reception is too low 
or there is a problem between us. Are we together? And so allow me to go slowly. Allow me to go slowly because my intention is for you to understand. If you pray and God says, I have rejected your prayer, will worship be complete? If you pray and a voice comes from heaven and God says, I have rejected your prayer, will worship be complete? No. I'm asking, will worship be complete? No. Because the worship is only complete when the prayer is done what? Is accepted. When the prayer is rejected, then the worship did not take place. And similarly, friends, I'm now, coming, I'm, I'm, I'm now coming slowly, that when the sermon does not make sense to the believers, because the preacher was operating at a very high level, he is too educated, and he's using big terms, and the members need a dictionary to even understand the title. Will worship have taken place? No. I can't hear you. Will worship have taken place? No, because the word of God was never proclaimed to the people. If we are still together, say amen. amen. Now, if you give tithe and you give offering and it is rejected, is worship complete or incomplete? incomplete. Worship is incomplete. And it is from that point that we ask the question, why was the given rejected? So that we don't participate in worship that will be done what? Rejected. Because once worship is rejected, that means worship did not take place. The Bible teaches that giving is not complete unless all aspects of of Worship, including giving, take place. What do we give? What do we give? I had told you earlier that we give our lives to God. We give what to God? Amen. Our lives to God. Number two, we give tithe to God. What do we give, number two? Amen. Tithe. And what is the meaning of tithe? Tithe is obedience to God. We are obeying God. We are saying, yes, God, you gave us. We return tithe as you wanted it. Obedience. And then... We give offerings as our love for God. Why do we give offerings? We give offerings as a sign of what? Love for God. Number one, we give ourselves to God. Why do we give ourselves to God? For salvation. You cannot be saved unless you give yourself. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. What does Romans chapter 12, verse 1 say? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living what? Sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Worship is not complete unless you give yourself to God. What do you say, church? Amen. What do you say, church? Amen. So we are saying, I'm, 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 I'm making big points here, and I didn't want the brethren who are sleeping to sleep throughout. Are we together? Amen. That number one, we give our lives for salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. When I say hallelujah, what do you say? Amen. And you raise your voice. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, we give tithe as obedience to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we give offering as a sign of our love for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. And so offerings are many. Allow me to break it down. Offerings include church development funds. When we are building the church, that is offering, not tithe. If you give your tithe to build the church, you have robbed God and you are a thief. And the Bible says, a curse is upon you for taking God's tithe to build the church. Churches are built 
with the offerings and not with the tithe. Iwinjo maber. Camp meeting offerings are offerings, not tithe. You cannot take tithe and make it camp offering. Never. And money for helping the poor, the poor, the poor, the poor, the needy. When you help the poor, that is offering. It is not tithe. If we understand each other, say amen. amen. Money for helping the poor is what? Offering. And so if you are going on the way and you meet a poor person and you take tithe and help the poor person, you owe God the money you gave the poor person. Because you took tithe and misdiverted the funds. The reason why some governors are now having court cases. Misappropriation of what? Of funds. And while you are saying, yeah, the corrupt. You are corrupt yourself when you take time and use it as offering. So before you throw stones at any governor, at any politician, remember the Lord treats you as worse than them because you are stealing from the Lord himself. Kama umelewa kitu yote hapo sema amen. Why was the given rejected? It was given, but the receiver rejected it. Why was the given rejected? Why did God reject what his people gave? Why did God reject what his people gave? I'm going to give you maybe three reasons, and then we will have a discussion. Number one, God rejected what was given because it was not done right. It was not done correctly. It was not done right. Why was the given rejected? Number one, because it was not done right. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Do you hear some music interrupting us? And that's a wedding, isn't it? Yeah. That must be a secular wedding, isn't it? I mean, how can they be singing such songs in a wedding? But I'm not shocked when you people marry, you do the same thing during reception. True or false? And you are saying we are marching to Zion. Maybe Zion Mall. Are we together? <laughs> Can't be Zion Heaven. Let me tell you, friends, as, as an aside, you see a good preacher sometimes, when you remember something good to tell God's children, you just tell them. Let me tell you, as long as you continue with secular behavior in your weddings, you are not candidates of the kingdom of God. And I will tell you, and I will tell you again, that dancing, that secular music that you do at the reception, it is not approved by heaven. Shake yourself, bring yourselves low, women in a line queuing, following a DJ who is not a believer. Carry on, but you are not heaven bound. I have to tell you the truth. Feel free. Invite secular DJs to take the microphone and say all obscenities in your weddings and have that kind of music. Let's shake ourselves, eat the meat, let's enjoy and you need to know the destination. Are we together? It is not right for a Seventh-day Adventist. It was not right in the past. It is not right today. It will never ever be right in future. That is the SDA church. And so if you were baptized in a crusade before you were told anything, you were just dipped in water, found yourself in church, when you see those things happening, I want you to know deep within your heart, it is not right, it is not Adventist. Have I made some sense? Yes. You need to get it clear, friends. We have a position against secular music as a church. We have a position, a biblical position against secular music. And we have a position against dancing. You can make it look as good as you want, but as long as it is secular and dancing, it is wrong. Some of you march in your weddings with the Kenny Rogers and Kenny G, 
endelea tu proceed no and after the marching we have to listen to Christ after that listen you cannot invite god and mix the world and god you must learn to distinguish between the holy and the unholy if you have understood me say amen, amen. and if you are heart pray for recovery I don't run entertainment business. Are we together? So let's read the Bible. Why was the given rejected? The Lord just impressed me to tell you that at this moment. Because I know this is the season of weddings and there could be a wedding tomorrow, there could be a wedding next week, or there could be one which took place last week and all of you are doing those things which don't belong to believers. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 4 verse 6 that then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? This is after Cain was told that your offering has been done what? Rejected. And then God tells him in verse 7, if you do what is what? Right. Will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Abel brought an offering, and Cain brought an offering, but for some reason, God rejected the offering of Cain. And Cain got angry and said, why are you rejecting my offering? And God tells him, if you had done the right thing, I would not have rejected it. What is the right thing? If we don't do the right thing as a church, we can give as much as we want, but we will not have worshipped. God will reject the offering and will reject us the givers. What is this not doing right? Probably he was bragging and showing off. Remember what Jesus said, that when you go to worship, what your right hand gives, the left hand should not do what? Should not know. But when you stand and say, uh, Church of God, my wife and I have been having a discussion for the last one year, and we have decided, uh, just in our family, we've been really praying about it, we've been very prayerful. Mm. And so my wife and I, my wife and I, you know, emphasis on wife and I, the and goes down. My wife and I, are we together? My wife and I, I've decided to give the church a hundred bags of cement to complete the work. What do you say? Yeah, it's, it's just our small contribution. I mean, it's just small, it's not much, and it's not even something we really say as a family that we are proud of. We are really not proud as a family. My wife, can you stand, please? Hey, my wife is not here. I'm not <laughs> but I'm saying, <laughs> just an example, are we together? Yeah, uh, that my wife can you stand please? Yeah, that's my wife. Maybe she can greet the meeting. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Uh, I know you don't mind seeing our children. Our children also participated. <laughs> and uh, actually our son is the one, we had decided to give 70, but our young son said it should be 100 bucks. Where is our son, please? Can you wave? <laughs> uh, our daughter, our daughter. <laughs> Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, it's, it's 100 bucks, yes. And the check, uh, the check, we, we, I think we have, we have given it. Isn't it treasurer? Treasurer, yes, we have given it. Thank you so much. After 10 weeks of building, people are wondering, where did that cement go? I thought they said they gave 100 cement. I mean, this work, and then the, 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 the muscles are saying, we still need more cement. Why? Because God rejected the other cement. You can't see where it went, because God is a miraculous God. You don't see where it went. People say, but we have been giving money. We have so far collected 10 million. Where has 10 million gone? It's because the owner of the building has done what? Rejected it. You can't see where it went. Maybe sometimes our giving is less than ideal. God says that tithe is 10%, but you give 5% of your income. What do you expect God to do? 
No, I can't hear you. What do you expect God to do? Reject it. Because tithe is 10%. You bring 9%. Because the other 1% bought airtime and bundles for you. And that's why we are asking this afternoon, why was the given rejected? And we are saying, number one, it was not done right. Either the giver was bragging and therefore was appreciated, and you know, even as church leaders, we go mad. Because somebody has given such a high number of cement, we call, okay, uh, pastor come and pray for this family so the children are there. And that day, they soon knew clothes. Are we together? The suits are new, the dresses are new. The sh you can tell the way the children are walking that the shoes are new. Are we together? The feet are not used to the, to the shoes. And so they come up front. Father in heaven, bless this family. Bless them. And bless them again, Father. Bless them. But they give us of 10 shillings, we will pray for them generally. Are we together? Do you know what Jesus said about that? Do you know what Jesus said about that? I'm sure you have read the Bible. Do you know what Jesus said? Okay, I will read the Bible. I, I, I never intended to read that verse, but with those kind of, yes, yes, and others just looking at me, yes, yes. Let's read the verse, Matthew chapter 6. Let's read Matthew chapter 6. From verse 1 to 4, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. <laughs> Emphasis in front. <laughs> in front. Are we together? Do you know the front of the church? Uh, in front where? Uh, in front of others. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Yeah. My family and I, are we together? And I even met a few friends I work with, my colleagues. Our manager gave 10 bucks. What do you say, church? Amen. And I want to encourage you to have good relationship with your managers. You must be a Christian at work. For your manager to give 10 bucks, are we together? My manager gave 10 bucks. My other colleagues at work also gave 20 bucks. And uh, my family and I gave 70 bucks. It's a total of a hundred bags. What do you say, church? <laughs> yeah, what do you say, church? Hey, church, you are not saying anything. What do you say? <laughs> uh, I will recommend that you look at me. Are we together? Don't look at those who are guilty of doing such things. I want you to look at me. Are we together? Because you are making me realize who is guilty. Are we together? <laughs> look at me. What does the Bible say in verse 1? If have no reward from your father, where? Amen. In heaven. The Bible is very clear. Anything you do openly for people to see, no reward from God. And that's why there was a time somebody collected a lot of money in his business and he took all the money to the GC. And he said, I'm contributing this money for the work of God and I don't want anyone to mention my name. And GC put up big projects to spend the big money. Money that is used across the world is not small money. We never even got to know the name. We had projects, I think, like Elijah Project. The Elijah Project of the youth. From that kind of money. Because the person said, if I give in the local church, somebody may note my name. So let's give directly to the GC and end the story there. And I'm praying that such people will be found who will come and say, let's continue with this work. I will push this work of the church to a such a level. Don't tell anybody where it comes from. Just get the contractors, let the work continue. This is my take. Don't mention nothing. There will be true blessings. But these politicians who come before us and say, I have brought five million 
the other 10 million, please follow it up, I'm going to send. And you spend the rest of your life following the 10 million in their offices, from one office to the other, one office to the other, next week, next week, next week. Even the five they gave is rejected. You will not see where it went through. Because God rejected it. God says anything we do in front for people to see is rejected. And so he says in verse 2, when you give the needy, do not announce it with the trumpets as hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. So that people say, hey, hey, hey. this work you have helped, you have really helped us. It has pushed the work. <laughs> to be honored by, are you reading the Bible? Yeah, read the Bible. To be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Verse 3. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is, is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we say, give what you have. Why was the giving given rejected? Because it was not done right. Maybe they were bragging, maybe they gave less than ideal, and maybe it was done for people and not for God. There are times we do things for people. I will give you an example so that God's children you can understand. If I ask you to help me because I'm sick, and you help me because I know you, you have not helped me. And you know there are those people who we help because we may need their help in the future. If a very rich man with a lot of money lost a relative, all of us go there to make sure he knows we are there, we together. I'm here with my family. We have just come to say we are very sorry, very sorry, very sorry. But when a poor person who can't help us anything loses a loved one, we meet them 25 weeks later and say, by the way, there was something I had had happened. Oh, we are really sorry. What was it, by the way? You lost who? Oh, we are sorry, we are sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I think, I don't know what was happening at that time. We couldn't make it. But a rich man loses a loved one. We go heads over heels. We stop everything and travel so many kilometers to go and say, hey, we have just come, my wife and I, and even our children came. Where are our children? Boy, boy, come, come, hey, come. <laughs> Father has a stern voice. We are about to lose investment here and you are what? Come. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we, 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 we are here. <laughs> My children and I and my wife, we are really sorry for what you have gone through. And we have brought a small gift just to say, Pole. And the small gift is supposed to secure the bigger gift you will be asking for. Are we together? In the future, when you call him for fundraising. Brethren, when we do that, do you expect God to bless you? I'm asking you, church. No, I'm asking you, God's church. Do you expect God to bless you? No, I can't hear you. Do you expect God to bless you? No. I can't hear you. Do you expect God to bless you? No. no. And that's why we are asking, why was the given rejected? And we are saying point number one, it was not done right. And we have just given examples of what it means not to do right. Let's go for the second reason. Because it was rejected. Why was the given rejected? Because what was given are rejects, rejects, rejects. You know things which are rejected. Why was the given rejected? Because what was given are what? Rejects. rejects. Yeah. These people who donate computers that are obsolete. They say, oh, hello, Africa. Do you need computers? Yes, 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 yes. 126 MB. All the computers, they can't even start. Then they ship so many computers from abroad. We pay duty at the port. 
And then when we get there, out of 100 computers, only 11 are working. Shame on them. They are giving us what they have used, 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 and exhausted. And then they say, who wants computers? And because we like free things, we all raise our hands, even when we have no reason for the computer. Are we together? How many want free computers? We all raise our hands. Shame on us for love of free things. The given was rejected because the given were what? I can't hear you. Because the given were what? Rejects. Rejects. Look at what the Bible say in Malachi chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. 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 Why was the given rejected? Malachi chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. The Bible says... When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, can you imagine? You are bringing a blind animal for sacrifice because after all it's going to die. When you bring a blind animal for sacrifice, is that not wrong? God is asking. God is asking, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice the lame or deceased animal, you, are, you have a very lame goat, then you say, this is I give to the Lord. Let's slaughter it. Or a sick one, you know this cow may die this week. Then you go to the priest and say, priest, my family and I have decided to offer a cow. Then the cow comes being pulled. It's suffering from anthrax. Are we together? <laughs> and so God is asking the Israelites, you guys, <laughs> you bring me a lame goat, a blind animal, a sick dying cow. And God is asking, is that not wrong? Is that not wrong? Try offering to your governor. God is saying, before you bring me, you take to a young, young professor. Are we together? Is that the governor around here? No, I'm asking, is that the governor around here? Yes. Yeah. So God is saying, if you want to test whether your gift is good, as a church, put it together and send it to Professor Nyang Nyong, the governor of Kisumu County. And say, governor, we are here with a blind goat. Or a limping sheep. One foot is completely bent. And you say, Governor, as a church we have brought you this sheep. <laughs> or a dying cow. And he says, will your governor be pleased with you? Will your governor say, congratulations, thank you so much for the gift. Will he accept you? says the Lord Almighty. God is asking, will it be accepted? Verse 9, verse 9. Now plead with God to be gracious to us with such offerings from your hands. Will he accept you? You are coming to pray for your child who did KCPE, KCSE. And what you are bringing is a sick dying cow. God is asking, you expect me to be gracious? God is just asking that kind of offering now you want me to be very kind and let your child pass tapita njia mrefu certificate diploma degree with headache in between why was the given rejected because the given were what There are people who are not responding. I'm just asking, why was the given rejected? Because the given were what? Yes. Why was the given rejected? Because the given were what? Yes. Listen, friends. God is careful about what we bring to him. Because what you bring shows your attitude towards him. Amen. That's why God says, you take to your governor. If you think it's very good what you brought, take it to the governor. And just see if a human governor will accept it. And then he says, if your governor will not accept it, how do you expect me, your God, to bless you with such? How? He is asking. Then you bring a bad offering and you say, God in heaven, have mercy on my children. Heal my grandfather. Oh, my uncle is sick. And then you wonder why your prayers don't go anywhere. It is because you forgot that Offering is part of worship. Worship is not complete unless you have given. 
But if what you give is rejected, you are doomed. So what are the rejects of our time? These days we no longer give cattle and what have you. And I want to remind you, friends, I told you there is an argument I've seen online by people who don't like SDA church, but they are stuck inside. You know, there are people called offshoots. They hate this church with a passion, but they stay inside. That they are a church within a church. Crazy fellows. Many of them are not normal. If you look at them keenly, they suffer from attention deficit. They just want attention, attention, attention. And you know what arguments they are giving? They are giving arguments that we are not supposed to give money as tithe and offering. That we must follow what the Bible says. Friends, are we supposed to give goats we don't have? <laughs> are we supposed to give sheep we don't have? Are we supposed to give doves we don't keep? The people gave what they gave that time because that is what they owned that time. In our present time, we have shillings, dollars, quarters, pounds, and euros, yens. If we are together, say amen. amen. And that's what we give to the Lord. And so when we get to the level of cryptocurrency that goes online, we will give cryptocurrency to the Lord. Did you hear what I say? Yes. We give what we have. So, what are the rejects that we give God today? I want to give a few examples so that it can help us. Number one, when you give God loose change, it remained from your shopping on Friday, then you took a vehicle to church, you paid the tuk-tuk, the three-wheel thing, tuk-tuk, and after you've paid, what remains now is what you shake your pocket and give to the Lord. God is saying, you go give your governor. Go give your governor that loose change. You give God loose change. Sabbath morning, children come and say, Mama, offering, and you search for loose change from your handbag. You shake the bag, then you hear, yeah, I can hear something. You shake it again, you hear something. Then you shake it on one side of the bag for easy searching. Are we together? Because the contents are many. You shake it on one side, then you dip your hand, you search, you search. The heavier one is 20, so you let it go. You, you search for the lighter one. Are we together? And then you give your children. God is saying, after you give them, you want to pray and you expect me to answer prayer. You expect me to answer prayer. Are you okay? God is asking, are you okay? You don't know that giving is part of worship. All along you are just quiet until they say, it's time for tithe and offering. Then when the deacons wake up with the bag, you are not moved. Until they get to you, when they reach your line, you start searching. As if all of a sudden, it has shocked you that it's time for offering. To start searching, you search that other side, search this other side, you search, you search. Then eventually the bug comes, and because you have touched the brown one, are we together? The brown one, you pull out the hand and just pass the bug the other side. You feel guilty for a few moments, and then the guilt goes. You tell yourself, I just survived. <laughs> just survived. But after that, they say those with the special prayer requests come, and you come there because they are laying off workers at your workplace end of this month. God, just remember me. You know my children are still young, and you know how we have struggled, we prayed to get this job, and yet you could not even give to the Lord. And that's why God is asking, in verse 9 of Malachi chapter 1, now plead with God to be gracious with you. With such offerings from your hands, will God accept you? <laughs> then you will tell pastor, why are my prayers not being answered with those kind of gifts? Do you give tithe? Yes. Do you give offering? Yes. What kind of tithe and offering? Loose change. Loose change. Loose change. Loose change. That's what you give God. Loose change. That if we questioned you today, what did you give this morning? You don't remember. Because it was so loose that your mind could not record it. It meant nothing for you. 
If we ask you, what did you give last Sabbath? You don't remember. Why? It was a negligible amount. I mean, that kind of money, who remembers? But you have not forgotten a child to your sister who you gave pocket money 3,000 and did not study in school. And you always remember, that child I paid for money and did not go to school. My 3,000! But when it comes to God, you give the kind of money you don't remember. And some of you are very keen on receipts. And you have just given that day 250. <laughs> Treasurer, have you seen my receipt? I just wanted to find out, is my receipt around there? <laughs> uh, you know, we like keeping these things for record. Record of what? <laughs> it's good to get your receipts anyway. Loose change rejects. Negligible amount that cost you nothing rejects. You remember David? Somebody offered David. David wanted to offer sacrifice. And a man came and called Arauna. The man came and told David, Listen, David, take the floor for free, firewood for free, cattle for free. You offer sacrifice, you are my king. And David looked at the man and said, I will not offer to God something that costs me nothing. If I'm not going to feel the pinch of what I'm giving, I'm not giving. And so, friends, I'm wondering, how is your giving? <laughs> Does it cost you anything? Or it's so negligible that you are just happy all the way? Are we together? What are other rejects? When we donate to the poor the things we don't need, because you are harvesting maize now, you look for maize that has weevils. weevils. Are we together? And then you say, oh, we are going to Kodiaga prison. Okay, we are going to Kodiaga prison. You get expired cooking oil or cooking oil that is expiring in one week. Are we together? You take to a children's home. Maze with weevils to a children's home. Then you look for your own clothes that you can no longer wear. The socks you have been wearing until they are so loose, you wear them, they want to come out by themselves. Are we together? The elasticity in the socks is finished. You wear it, and as you walk, it flies out. And then you say, no, this is our donation as a family. We are really touched by the poor people. And you give them clothes they can't wear. Embarrassing things. When you give what you yourself are rejecting, that is not a donation. You are dumping. And God says, how do you pray and expect grace after giving such a thing? Oh, women ministries are going where? To Ugenya. What are they going to do in Ugenya to preach? Let us assist them with the things they need. Are we together? What will they need? Oh, they may need clothes to assist the poor. So you look around your house and say, Hey, my daughter, I've not seen you wearing these clothes for two years. Do you need them? No, they are out of fashion. I don't need them. Oh, give them. Costs you nothing. You found a place to dump them. After all, the whole year they were there. You had nowhere to take them. Listen, friends, our spirituality must grow to the level that when we think of helping the poor, we go to the shop, buy new clothes, and take to them. Amen. Brand new clothes that we look at and say, let's give these to the poor. Brand new shoes. Not things we have rejected. I wear this tie, then I discover, hey, I've been wearing this tie for many years. Then I say, oh, I go somewhere and say, Elder, I'm very proud of the work you are doing as Elder here. I will give you my tie. And you expect God to bless you. Even when the Elder says, hey, Pastor, God bless you. I only had one tie. Now I have to. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. God in heaven is asking, you are actually expecting me to bless you. Me? Ha, me, I bless you. <laughs> God is loving in heaven. What? Bless you. For giving a rejected tie, who party, tie gone, blessing nothing. Nothing was debited in your account or credited. If we are still together, say amen. amen. Why was the given rejected? Number one. Number one. Number one. Number two. Because it was rejects. 
Be careful about bringing rejects to God. And be careful about that which you don't do right. The last one that I will share with you, friends, is that the givers were not willing. The givers were not willing. Why was the given rejected? Because the givers were not willing. Why was the given rejected? Because the givers were not willing. Why was the given rejected? Because the givers were not willing. Why was the given rejected? Because the givers were not what? Willing. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 to 5 and verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 to 5 and verse 12. And then we will read 1 Chronicles 29, verse 8 and 9. 1 Chronicles 29, verse 8 and 9. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 to 5, In the midst of a very severe trial, their overwhelming joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Now friends, I don't know if you are ready to listen to this. Paul the Apostle, who did I say? Are you listening? Who did I say? Apostle Paul uh, was encouraging the Corinthians to give. And Apostle Paul tells the Corinthians that I want you to think of the Macedonians who have been giving very generously. And he tells them in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2, that the Macedonians are poorer than you. Humanly speaking, they are poor. Maybe they are unskilled labor, but you Corinthians are educated. Maybe they walk on foot, but you Corinthians are driving vehicles, big vehicles for that. And God, uh, and God speaks through Apostle Paul and he tells them, look at their poverty. That in their poverty, they gave so much that it is even a blessing to you, the rich. The Bible says they went to the apostles and said, why have you left us out? We plead with you. You put us in the list. Put us in the list. And do you know who are the guests of honors who are in the list? The Corinthians. Corinthians. Now Paul is surprised. The Corinthians who are the chief guests did not even give much. Then the Macedonians who pleaded to be in the guest list gave much more than what was expected. And he's telling the Corinthians, listen guys, these guys were touched, but you guys are not touched. Verse 5, and they exceeded our expectations. <laughs> this is where a believer who understands English says what? Amen. Amen. And I'm told that this is an English speaking church. Referring to the language that the presenters must use. Must use. Are we together? Not necessarily the language that the listeners understand, but the language that the presenters must, must use. English-speaking church, as in the speakers must use what? English. <laughs> and sometimes you get to understand it when you speak English and they don't even say amen where they should say amen. Listen, that, and they exceeded our expectations. <laughs> they gave now listen the formula of the Macedonians anyone ready to listen to the formula of the Macedonians the last part of 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 5 they gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us our giving is poor because we never gave ourselves first. To who? God. To God. That's why we say as theologians that your giving is the index of your spirituality and we don't apologize. You can write paragraphs to complain about us, but we will always stop there and say, your giving is the index of your spirituality. And it is not how much you give. Are we together? It is not how much you give, but how much in relation to your income. 
It is not about how much, but how much in relation to your what? To your income. And so when you give very little and your income is very big, your spirituality is under below average. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 12. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not Hallelujah. Amen. And that matches the sermon we were preaching to you this morning. That give from what? I can't hear you. Give from what? Give from what you have. And that's what the Bible is saying. That if you are willing, the gift will be accepted if it is from what? You have. And that's why you remember the story of that lady. The story of that lady in Mark chapter 12. In Mark chapter 12. The lady who went to give. And Jesus was at the corner and the guest of honors came with a lot of money and Jesus didn't say anything. Then there was a lady who was waiting for everyone to go. We call them syndikiza. Are we together? What are syndikiza? And the lady came, looked left, looked right and dropped in two coins. Jesus told the disciples, hey, watch that lady. She has given more than everybody because God looks at your giving in relation to what you have. And in relation to what she had, she had given more than those who gave more. If you have understood, say amen. amen. And so friends, I've just come to tell you, the Bible emphasizes the importance of willingness. Verse 12, for if the willingness is there, that means if you are not a willing giver, God will reject your giving. God will reject your giving. So, what kind of giving is not willing in, that, in this church? What kind of giving in the church do we say that people are not willing? Number one, when people are threatened with embarrassment. When people are threatened with embarrassment, that is not willing giving. Where we say, can we have all the church elders to stand up? Now, when church elders stand up, do you know what they have? And then all of a sudden we say, elders start giving. And the first one gives 5,000. How do I give 200 and I'm an elder? Won't that be the reason for the nominating committee to review my eldership? <laughs> if you get what I'm saying, say amen. amen. And so any giving that is under duress is not a giving that is willing. And God will reject that giving. When they felt other people were shining using their money. You know there are people who give but they are grumbling. They are saying, ah, this money which people are very proud of here in this church, it is us who gave. Eh? You see, it is us who bought the microphone. And now they don't even allow us to talk in church. That giving is rejected. Or sometimes when we give, but we don't trust the handlers of the money. Let us just give, but I'm not sure about our treasury this year. I'm not sure about our treasury this year. Brethren, I'm not going to wear you off. I want to stop here and say that our giving can be rejected by God. And we have given how many reasons? Three reasons. May the Lord bless you. Amen? Amen. So what do you do with this kind of information? Make sure that your giving is not done what? Yes. Rejected. Because when your giving is rejected, you have also been done what? Yes. Rejected. And so I want us to pray to God to forgive us where we have brought rejected gifts to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Father in heaven. We are guilty of bringing things that are fit for rejection. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. And help us to give what is acceptable before you. And in an acceptable manner is our prayer in Jesus' name.